Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm using my new camera for the first time to actually film a proper video. Although, as always, struggling. But the, the screen's facing me, so I can actually see that I'm on screen, so that's really nice. Anyway, waffling away, let's stop that and let's do a quick fire questions round on electrolysis because this has been hotly requested. So as always, pause the video after I ask the question and then provide your answer and see if it matches with my idea of the perfect answer. So let's start with the obvious question, which is define electrolysis. And that's using electricity to decompose or break down a substance. Now what sorts of substances can undergo electrolysis? And you're looking for giant ionic substances, things like sodium chloride, things like magnesium oxide, etc, etc. So you're looking for a metal and a non-metal. Next question is, what do the electrodes attempt, tend to be made out of? And they tend to be made out of an inert or unreactive substance such as graphite or carbon. Obviously graphite is made from carbon. Things like platinum as well are also used as electrodes. Next question. Why does the electrolyte, so the substance being electrolyzed, need to be molten? This comes up time and time again and you need to say so that the ions are free to move. Next up we need to look at the rules dictating which ion goes to which electrode. So let's start by looking at the positive electrode. What is the rule for determining which ion goes to the positive electrode? So the rule is that if you have a halogen in solution, that will win. So something like bromine or chlorine or fluorine, that will discharge. If there's no halogen solution, then the hydroxide ion will discharge. So that's OH minus. And then after that, it's any other substance. But I promise you won't be asked for that. So let's take an example. For, for example, we've had sodium chloride and we're popping it into aqueous solution. So we've also got hydroxide ions present there which ion discharges at the positive electrode and why and that will be chlorine because first of all it's negatively charged so it's attracted to the oppositely charged electrode and second of all it is a halogen if you're finding this hard guys look at my electrolysis video because this is more of a like checking that you understand it like quick fire rather than like giving you a total in-depth um, tutorial on this topic so the next obvious question is, what is the rule dictating which ion discharges at the negative electrode? And in this situation, you're looking for the least reactive element. So literally, look at those positive ions and pick out the least reactive element. So for example, if you had potassium chloride in solution, and that was aqueous, which meant that there were also water, so there was also hydrogen ions, which would discharge out the hydrogen and the potassium, well, it would be hydrogen because hydrogen is less reactive than potassium and remember, it's positively charged, which means it's attracted to the negative electrode. Now we need to look at half equations. So can you write me the half equation, the ionic half equation for the discharging of hydrogen? And that will now flash up next to me. Let's do an ionic equation now for the discharging of chlorine. Okay, so that should be flashing up next to me as well. Now we need to look at the key definitions for terms such as what is reduction. Now reduction is the gain of electrons and loss of oxygen. What is oxidation? Oxidation is the loss of electrons or gain of oxygen. And in electrolysis we'll be looking at the electron definition. I just didn't want anyone to moan at me for not mentioning oxygen. So don't get confused, oxygen isn't a thing in the electrolysis topic. In fact I'll give you lots of examples now for half equations. So let's do the half equation for when copper discharges. And now you've done that equation, is this reaction oxidation or reduction and say why? Now when copper ions form copper, copper atoms, you have to add electrons, which means it's a reduction reaction. Write the ionic equation for the discharging of bromine. And is this reaction oxidation or reduction and why? Now because bromine started off as a bromide ion which is negatively charged, you need to take away that negativity. So you're taking away electrons, which means you're carrying out an oxidation process. Now we're going to focus on some certain um, electrolysis reactions you need to know about, such as the electrolysis of aluminium. So first question, what is the ore from which aluminium is obtained from? And that is bauxite. Which ion discharges at the negative electrode? 
and that's the metal ion as always, so it's the aluminium. Write the ionic equation for this reaction. Is this re reaction oxidation or reduction and say why? Now this reaction is reduction because you're adding electrons to the aluminium ion to make it just an aluminium atom. Which ion discharges at the positive electrode? And that's oxide, so it's going to turn into oxygen. So you need to write the half equation for me. And that should flash up. Is this oxidation and reduction and why? This is oxidation because you're losing electrons because the O2 minus needs to lose negativity, it needs to lose electrons to become neutral. Now, I should have probably mentioned this before, but why is electrolysis used rather than the blast furnace to obtain aluminium? And that's because aluminium is more reactive than carbon, so there's no point trying to react carbon in a blast furnace with aluminium and expect the carbon to steal away the oxygen as part of the aluminium oxide because aluminium is too reactive, so it would literally have no reaction if you added it to carbon in a blast furnace. We need to use electrolysis, therefore. So why is the electrolysis of aluminium such an expensive process? And that's due to the high electricity cost because aluminium um, melts at such a high temperature. The second most biggest expense is the fact that the oxygen that goes to bind with the positive electrode reacts and the positive electrode is made from carbon. So when the oxygen reacts with the carbon, you end up with carbon dioxide and that burns away that electrode, meaning that they need replacing every month or so. So that's a major, major cost. Why is aluminium used for airplanes? And you need to say because it has the property of which it is low, has low density, which means it's lightweight, but we need to say low density to make sure we get the marks. Why is molten creolite added to the mixture? And that's to lower the operating temperature from around 3000 degrees to 850 degrees, therefore saving on the electricity bill at least just a little bit. Now we need to look at the electrolysis of brine or sodium chloride, and this is an aqueous solution, which means there's hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions also. Now it's a very specialist cell, it's a diaphragm cell, which separates all the solutions. You don't need to know too much about that, but you do need to work out what substance will discharge at each electrode. So first of all, if we've got Na+, plus, H+, plus, OH-, minus, and Cl-, minus, which of those ions is going to go to the negative electrode and why? And the answer here is hydrogen will discharge, and that's because it is positively charged, so it's attracted to the negative electrode, and it is less reactive than sodium. Now, which ion discharges at the positive electrode and why? That will be chlorine, because it's a halogen. Write me two ionic equations for hydrogen and chlorine production. And therefore, what is left over in solution at the end? And that will be sodium hydroxide. Now we need to look at the uses of these substances. So what is it used for hydrogen? Well, it's used to harden vegetable oils, i.e. hydrogenation, and it's used as a fuel. What is it used for chlorine? It's used to make bleach, i.e. to disinfect swimming pools. What is it used for sodium hydroxide? Again, it's used to make bleach, but it is also used in paper making. Right, was there anything else I wanted to say? I just realised doing electrolysis is a quick fire question is so, so hard, because I'm assuming you already know lots and lots about this topic for you to actually understand what I'm saying. But anyway, hope you found it helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I'll be back soon with another video. See you guys.